Okay, hi everybody. Uh, so tonight we would like to start off with uh, talking about creating protective energy and the Wei Qi, which is external Qi. And we're gonna do that and then we're gonna play around with uh, uh, a very uh, focused Qua exercise to actually get, get into that as a way of amplifying and circulating the energy even, even better. So the, uh, to kick it off, let's, let's just talk about Wei Qi. Wei Qi is external Qi. That is the, uh, the field that gets produced and is associated with you and your body mind, but is not limited by your skin. And, um, uh, it actually is a field that emanates beyond your, you know, the, the limits of your body and projects outward and projects outward actually to the ends of the universe once you get, once you crank that up. How much it does and how fast, that's going to be, uh, uh, that's another matter. But the, uh, your ability to generate enough energy so that it is, it, your you're able to export energy and what kind of energy you export is the quality of Wei Qi. Now Wei Qi, it's like a force field. And in Chinese medicine, they think of it, uh, they say that it uh, wards off pernicious influences. And that means bad stuff. So it's, it's very much akin to your immune system, only not in so much mechanical terms, but more in terms of of energetic terms. You actually create this, this field which filters out bad stuff coming in. And it also enables, enables your body mind to alert the resources that you already have that are necessary to deal with whatever invasions that are coming in. So this is, um, pertinent to what Rick's question was, which was, you know, is there something we can do to actually create, you know, more protection in these interesting times that we're in right now, the, you know, with uh, the, uh, the virus going around. And I, I believe that it, this is a real key to that. It goes well beyond that because it actually enhances your, your well-being, your state of well-being, your your feeling of vitality, your sense of confidence, all these things are affected by how much of an exporting uh, system you are, how much of a, uh, an energy exporting system, and in this case, particularly a coherent energy exporting system. And that kind of very neutral language, uh, you can think of it you know, in, in other ways too, but let's, let's keep it neutral for the moment to say that if you are able to crank up your own chi to a point where you are radiating outward, it changes you. And it changes your relationship to everything that you come in contact with. Most people that I've encountered here on planet Earth are not energy exporting systems. Although when you do run into one, you'll, uh, you, you notice it. You say, oh, wow, that person is charismatic or that person has a glow about them or there's a, a radiance and and some people are really really good at it and they just go walk into a room and the whole room just lights up um, but I think the vast majority of people are running at a deficit and so what I um, my approach to it there's a lot of ways to go about it but my approach to it is a very practical one. I kind of follow with uh, you know, William James idea of, of truth is, is determined by what is the cash value in experiential terms is the way he put it. And uh, that's kind of how I go about it with this as well. It's like, what, how do we get to this in ways that uh, we can experience it and use this stuff and make it make it more. And um, so the, uh, the key is 
first of all, being, get, getting your three pillars in so that you have, first of all, energy is coherent. And just having a coherent field is, it helps a lot. Just by getting your, by pointing, reaching, feeling into that, and just do that with me right now. Just feel into, just point, reach, and just feel into your body mind. And notice there's an immediate transformation that occurs. So that organizes this, the energy that's already within the system. Then we add to it energy, uh, central equilibrium. And here I, I stand up and weight over the balls of my feet, reach with my knee wand, tuck in the chin, feel open up the jade pillow gate and have feel myself centered. Relax my shoulders and, and drop my tailbone, kind of just kind of relax into that and sink into that. And what happens now? This is central equilibrium, Zhong Ding. And what that does is it allows us to access the big chi. Just by doing that, we open the gates and the feet and the Yong Chan points and it allows the earth chi to rise. The, and it also allows the, the used up chi to descend and go out through the feet and dump into the earth. So you're grounding, you're grounding all that and you're allowing this the yin chi of the earth, the supporting yin chi of the earth to rise. Same time, by reaching up with the knee one, you are allowing the yang chi of the heavens to come down through your body and out through your feet. And with that yang chi comes energy and information that illuminates your chakras and allows your body mind to organize around that. And you can feel that immediately if you go into into the central equilibrium. If you add that with the pointing, feel the energetic coherence, and immediately we have more chi and the chi is coherent. So now we're, we're starting to really crank it up. Then we, the third pillar, and I've been talking about this recently and just wrote a, a blog about it a couple of days ago, talking about renaming or re, re uh, uh, defining the third pillar it used to be just Sun Kwa, which is still a key part of it. That is, you want to release your Kwa and be able to sink down. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that tonight. But you want to be able to sink down. And by doing that, you're no longer pushing away from the earth, which then allows the energy to rise and doesn't get trapped here at the, uh, at the hip area. So Sun Kwa, then the opening the Jade Pillow Gate, which we do as part of the, uh, the central equilibrium, it also as a way of unkinking the hose. And, and you can feel that and it's easily testable. If you lift your chin and kink the hose, there's an immediate effect. If you drop it and reach up with the knee one, there's an opposite effect. It's expansive. The chi flows and the whole system gets plugged in immediately. You immediately feel it in your hands. And then the third thing that I've been focusing on for unkinking the hose is to activate the elbow gin. Reach out with the elbows a little bit, open the shoulder joints. So the shoulder joints tend to be another place where the hose gets kinked really, really uh, uh, badly. And uh, and there's a lot of old, old habits there that get, get in the way. So, but as soon as you do that, so we have, we've unkinked the hose at the Jade Pillow Gate. We've done it at the, at the Quah. We've also done it here at the hands, at the, I mean, at the elbows. And so you immediately feel that powerful surge of chi in your hands. And as a result, you got more chi going through, the chi is coherent and you fill up. And when you fill up like this, you become a coherent energy exporting system and a powerful one at that. And this is where we start. This is where we start. 
you know, Scott was asking earlier about the, uh, you know, being able to be aware of many things at once, be able to do many things at once. And in this state, we are able to do that. We're able to activate numerous systems and able to keep track of them. And because we're not thinking about them, we, are, we know, we know without thinking. And so therefore we're able to organize a, a bunch of different systems and make things happen very quickly. So we, just by getting the, the, uh, the three pillars in, we automatically become en coherent energy exporting systems. We immediately crank up our Wei Qi. And that actually is, can keep getting bigger. So let's just uh, sit down again for a moment and uh, discuss. So as you as you crank up the Wei Chi, you get bigger, bigger field, and it you start accessing energy and information that you can't whenever you're in your normal, um, for better word, a collapsed energy state. Whenever your your chi is is kind of compressed and and stunted, this way it, it it's expansive and allows you to to contact. Uh, energy and information that is not available to you otherwise. You, by do, simply by doing that, you have opened the three eyes, the eye of flesh, the eye of mind, and the eye of spirit. You're able to move into that realm, the, uh, what Cheng Man Ching would call the heaven level of Tai Chi development. That's whenever you're starting to access spiritual force. The um, uh, uh, what they call it, the uh, Chong, Jing Shen, that's it, Jing Shen, the spirit of vitality that particularly comes from opening the Jade Pillow Gate. You get the spirit of vitality, which um, then allows you to access the spiritual force. This gets you able to do the cool Tai Chi tricks that, uh, that, upper level people can do. Were I tell them about this thing of, you know, holding the tree bone and feeling the outside? Um, yes, we'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to that as a practical thing. Uh, so any questions before we go forward? We covered a lot of stuff here. Um, everybody got a comment, Rick. Your Rick? comment? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was noticing when we were standing there that, you know, we go, um, I was like reaching with my little finger and thumb, and it's just like I can feel it in my nails. It was just like great, like like a good. lightning bolt shooting out of them. Fabulous, great, good, good, good. That's uh, yeah. So that's liver chi. Um, liver chi. So liver chi that when you feel in the fingernails, and liver chi gets us started. That's wood chi, and it 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 initiates stuff. Okay. So it uh, it uh, so that's 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 great. Yeah, feeling that 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 nail chi is is kind of cool. Um, anybody else? Okay, we're all good so far. Um, good. So so uh, moving forward from here. Um, a question was asked about. Um, Stan asked about a question about separating the yin and the yang. And that is being able to, to it, identify something as going out or coming in. You know, if something, if the energy is, is going out, we say it's yang, if the energy is coming in, it's, it's yin. And, motion it, it, it is also yin and yang that way. So anything expanding is yang, anything contracting is yin. So separating those two 
And how do you separate it? You separate it with your mind. That is, you're, you consciously identify it as such because you're, you're, everything is coming from a state of, of wholeness that is, remains whole until we say, oh, this is not that. So as, we, as soon as we say, this is not that, as soon as we identify anything, and as soon as we name anything, we have created a polarity. And so whenever we do that, we create energy by creating a polarity. You get poles in opposition is how we generate an energy field. So this is where the paradox of Taiji comes in and that we are coming from a state of wholeness and with our minds, we're creating separation. And by doing that, we generate flow. And so the, um, that paradox is what feeds this whole system. That's why Taiji Chuan is the, the martial art based on the interplay of polarities. It, we generate chi, we generate energy by this, this separation of yin and yang. Right? We're saying, okay, this one, this, if I go like this, my left hand coming out is my yang hand, my right hand pulling back, that's my yin hand in that situation. But as soon as I turn it around, oh, it's the opposite. So it's always, always shifting. And that's why in the, in the Taiji 2, they have this, it's always circular, circling around and yin turns to yang, turns to yin, turns to yang, turns to yin, and each of them contains a bit of the other. And so it's a, a, a dynamic process, but it's all within the wholeness of the diagram, the wholeness of the circle. So we have those two together are what creates the, both the coherence of the system, which is wholeness, and also generates the energy. So we're gonna do a, uh, a practical thing uh, for, uh, for that right now. And I think we played with it a little bit last week, but once you stand up, And uh, we're going to do a universal post exercise. And this way, you're, we're going to have a very, very practical way of, of using those three pillars and to, uh, to generate uh, a, a, a profound field and also poles in opposition. So you want to feel the ball of your left foot, put your right foot forward and come up on the toe of your right foot. You want to feel, reach with your knee one. You want to feel your, your uh, set your knee over the ball of the foot. So there's a, a dynamic kind of, kind of a, at the edge of the diving board kind of feeling there. And sun kwa, so you boom, boom, just release that and you're settling, sinking down down into your left leg and reach with your elbows and bring your hands up to shoulder height. You want your, your elbows and your hands up at shoulder height and you're reaching out, opening your shoulder joints, opening your elbow joints, your fingers, your wrists, everything is reaching. So that's expansive, that's young. You're also your your hands are poles in opposition. Feel the opposition between them. Feel the chi filling the space inside the arms and pressing outward, filling up like blowing up a balloon. At the same time, feel the energy outside pressing in and containing it within the space within your arms. If you find your hips getting at all uh, locked up, just boom, boom, just open up there and just relax a little bit. Reach with those elbows, relax your shoulders, open the shoulder joints. Now, 
Feel your hands pushing toward each other without moving. Now feel your hands pulling apart without moving. So right now we are creating a field. The creation is not happening out of nothing. We are plugged into the big chi, so we're redirecting that. But at the same time, we are using those, the raw materials we do have. We have a body that we're animating and directing. We're activating in a certain way. We're holding the body in a certain way. So all this is part of the creative process. We take what materials we have and we put them together in a certain way so that we can produce a certain effect. So this can be done for a long time, but we're not going to right now. We're going to bring the hands down, step back, and put your left foot forward. Same idea, boom, boom. Want to get the hip joints relaxed. Bring your hands up. Reach out with the elbows. Feel those poles in opposition. Reach with your knee one. A large part of this, doing this type of exercise, is getting used to handling this much energy. It's one thing to be able to allow it to go through. Another thing is to like, oh, what do I do now? And it's like driving a very fast car. You know, you if you you have to get comfortable handling that much power. Keep reaching with your elbows, relax your shoulders. Feel the electricity being produced in your hands. Feel them pulling apart, pushing together. Feel the hands rising, pushing down all at once and with no, with no motion. Yeah, bring the hands down. And just feel into that. Reach out with the elbows. Don't let your elbows, don't let your arm just hang. Reach out with the elbows, but very relaxedly. Feel the weight over the balls of the feet. Notice the quality of, of, of energy is different in this fairly neutral posture than in the very young universal post posture. We're still this vessel that's allowing the big chi to move through us and your body is reacting to the uh, effect of having that much energy move through it. You may feel some resistance and that's exactly what it is. It's like resistance in electrical wire that makes it get hot. Because if you're, as we uh, develop this we are upgrading our wiring and creating a bigger conduit for more energy to go through. Now bring your hands out. And feel the poles in opposition. Press them together without moving. Pull them apart without moving.
Now feel, feel the space between the hands. Feel the field that's being generated between the palms. Now feel the, the space on the outside of your arms. Feel what you're bumping up against in the space there. So by doing this, we're cultivating those three eyes. We're also getting comfortable, more comfortable, being in that super conscious state. So going back to the idea of separating the yin and the yang. So in this state we're in right now, this neutral state, there's a state of wholeness. If we raise the right hand, reach with the elbow, raise the right hand, reach down with the left hand, we are separating the yin and the yang. And as a result, we're creating energy. We're creating a field. Feel the space around your hands, around your arms. And then your left hand comes up, your right hand comes down. Left hand is yang, right hand is yin. Now feel into your wei chi, feel into the field around your body. Feel it bumping up against the ether, the, the, the space that surrounds us. And then bring the hands down. Step in, deep breath, gather and disappear the chi. Push it down, throw it away. Dissolve into the emptiness. No more separation, no more yin yang, just now. Okay, grab a seat. Okay, why don't you give me a gallery? There we go, good. All right, uh, uh, questions, thoughts, comments? Complaints? Rick Myers. Rick. No complaints. <laughs> I, felt, yeah. I felt like I had down gloves of energy and a fur coat of energy. <laughs> it just, I felt extra fur. <laughs> That's funny. And, and when you said, now relax, my response immediately was, I am relaxed. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wonderful. Richard. Um, 
the, the interesting and regrettable part of uh, a long study of Tai Chi is uh, so often beginning again. Uh, this gave <laughs> me a whole new perspective on White Crane. Um, mm. So I just, I just wanted to throw that out. It's now, you know, I'm trying to think of, of uh, core application to every movement. Um, yeah, but but thank thank you for that. That's gonna help. Uh, that's gonna help energize uh, what I do. You know what we Beautiful. do. Beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome, Dennis. Yeah, Rick. So, are you saying wholeness would, is not energy until you separate yin and yang? That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yes. So like whole this uh, is like a battery until you separate and then a charge is created. Um we're talking in philosophical terms. We're talking okay, we talk yeah, about, about that. And 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 that's an extreme because there is no absolute wholeness, you know, yeah. and, and, and in real terms. And so it's uh uh but until you think about it. They're just what is. Okay. Uh, uh, yes. It's just what is until you think about it. And then you like, about it. if you want to have energy, you have to say, okay, there needs to be, where's the energy? The energy has to be moving or doing something to something. You have to find a state of wholeness and then separate. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that in a state of wholeness, there is no energy because there's no motion. Right. Okay. Nothing. You can't have any motion if something is in a state of wholeness, right? It's a, as soon as you say, "Oh, that piece there is moving. My hand is moving." Okay. Ah, okay. Then I say, "Oh, there is a hand, and the hand is something separate from other things." Okay. Then, okay. Otherwise, it's just what is. So, so the tai the tai chi was the was the void from which the or, or the Wuji, the Tai Chi came from the Wuji, which was, was okay. I see. And so the Wuji is is the undifferentiated nothingness that preceded it, which yeah, was okay. zero manifestation, infinite potentiality. Okay. Okay. That, and then okay. from that comes the Tai Chi, which is the wholeness, and then we the the from from the from the, the, the nothingness comes the one, from the one comes the two, the, uh, the yin yang, and then from the two comes the three, right, which right. some places say heaven, earth, and man. So then, uh, and then from that uh, comes the 10,000 things. And uh -huh. so, that, uh, so, <laughs> so that's, that's it. So the, but if you're in a state of wholeness, you know, that's, where's the energy? The, it, yeah, okay. Okay, so it's, it's, it's just, just now, it's just, yeah. You know, it's what is Beatrice? You had something. Yeah, I did. Um, look, there's a phone ringing in the background, so um, it's hard to find the words for what I'm, my question. I'll try to find them. So, I I am trying to make some decisions. So I've been very anxious lately, and when I started the exercise, I was feeling totally fried by the energy, like just like 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 almost felt almost felt sick. Almost made me, made me feel nauseous, and I felt hot. You right when you were talking about wires getting hot, I was like, "Yeah, I was feeling that." And then I yeah, kind of, <laughs> what's that? So yeah, that's me. <laughs> so I I kind of would love some help from you. Like, I I, I shifted something internally where I mostly I just relaxed. Like I just actually let myself like let that like brain that had been so anxious the last few days. I'm ag I agonize over big decision. Um, I, or I have done. It in the past i shall say so i somehow like just relax and kind of and, and and let my mind just go blank and let my muscles held my muscles but just sort of allowed myself to soften and then it was okay and then and then and then the energy flowed through me it was i was definitely like resisting it hard and it was almost hurting me it almost like felt like it was making me sick but i just want to i guess i want some more help understanding like what, I don't know exactly what I did in that moment, and if you have ideas about how to, what what are, what the optimum state of mind should be to to not be resisting and white knuckling. 
I don't, it's a hard question. I don't really know what I'm asking. I, uh, well, I mean, I'm, I can speak to you in general terms, not in terms of your specific situation. Yeah. But it goes back to what I was saying before that it all begins with the wholeness. So we, we start with the wholeness, i.e., coherence. Uh, we, we bring it to integration. That, those are all names for wholeness, for oneness. So you return to that as your first order of business in any situation if you want to approach it from a Taiji perspective. So, you know, you, you point, you reach, you feel, and immediately you start to, to, to shift to the extent that your mind is still going ta 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 it, it is, you're not there yet, right? So you want to feel some more. So say, okay, maybe I need a little more energy. So then you feel your central equilibrium. You reach with your elbows, you boom, boom. You get all that stuff. So you start to crank it up to a point where you are impacting more on the world than the world is impacting on you. So in your situation, it sounds like the world is impacting on you, causing your mind to say, ah, incoming, Incoming energy and information, too much, too strong, must push away, ah. And so it's, that's, that's where your energy is, a, it's a collapsed field. So if you expand the field, make that field coherent, then it's not, you are, you are pushing back with more than it's pushing in. Okay. That, does that make sense? Yeah. So that, that, that's, I mean, in ter real, real general terms, that's the one size fits all answer to every question of that sort. <laughs> Get coherent, first order of business, and then, you know, meet and fill. So, <laughs> you know, get, get, get that going and then fill up with your chi, you know, meet, meet the moment and fill up. And that, um, that's my recipe for, for anything. <laughs> it, okay. it's, it, it, it's solves all, solves all your ills. So, okay. Thank <laughs> Great. You. Anybody else? Stan. Yeah, you're on, on, on mute, Dan. Stan. Unmute, Stan. You're, you're, you're not, unmute. <laughs> mute. Okay. Uh, with the exercises we're doing, uh, it almost reminds me of uh, uh, like uh, when current flows through a wire, you're producing a magnetic field. And when, uh, and especially towards the end, it seemed like I felt this when you said, feel uh, the outside, you know, all the way, uh, away from you and on the inside. I was starting to feel that. That's a really good analogy for it, Stan. That, that's a very good analogy. So if you run a, a current through something perpendicular to that, you'll have a magnetic field. Yes. So it, it's a very similar kind of thing. Uh, I would not, uh, I don't think Qi works in electromagnetic terms so much, but we do have an analogy there. I think we do, because uh, you do, it's, it's start, you know, I'm starting to feel that what's out there. And uh, you, know, you said in between the hands, and uh, then feeling on the outside. So it's like there's some sort of interaction, like the uh, chi is actually uh, part of it and helping you to feel that. Yes, yes, I think, I think you're right. That's a good analogy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? Scott. Okay, so um, on a physical level, like especially when I'm doing the bear or something, my thighs will burn. And I've recently recently realized that um, if I really focus on the three pillars, it'll stop. Now tonight doing the exercises, I my right leg was right calf was cramping up something crazy and it wouldn't couldn't get it to stop. So any thoughts on the physical? And I you know, part of my problem is my knees and everything are out of balance. I know that. 
Well, uh, cramping is, is his own thing, particularly in, in summertime. And uh, you, you, you wanna, you're gonna get that just from, from the fact you're probably sweating a lot and doing a lot of walking in your job. So uh, um, you wanna make sure you have lots of uh, uh, electrolytes. Uh, I take trace minerals whenever I get crampy. And it's because the, uh, you know, the sweating depletes your body of, uh, of uh, important electrolytes. So you take trace minerals and magnesium. Those are very helpful for that. But uh, the other thing on more of a, a broader application, because I, I assume that this is a, occurs at other times of the year as well, right? The, uh, that, that feeling in your legs? Um, this cramping is that it's, it's that's it's just because I was you know standing in one position. I don't I don't get cramps very often. Okay, it's good. More the, it's more the burning is like you know it's a muscle it's a muscular thing. Right, and I think w w the burning comes from uh, your body is trying to figure out which muscles to use, <laughs> and the muscles which push away from the earth are the ones that generally are the first ones we access. And those are the ones we want to let go of. And so um, and there's a, a deeper layer, which are more of a yin muscle. And that is, allows us, that's what we settle into when we're just relaxing and, and, and getting sung. Okay, so uh, I don't know if we're even going to get uh, get a chance to do the qual thing tonight, because it's, actually is relevant to that. But the uh, being able to uh, to get more sung is really the, the, the answer to your question. And that is doing it enough so that your body is able to get rid of the default setting, which is a muscular contraction that pushes away from the earth so that you can go and relax and, and, and sink down into it. Yeah. Yeah, I've also found that if my if my muscles are starting to work over time in any particular position, I always check my um, central equilibrium. Like, am I aligned properly? Because generally, if I just shift my alignment a millimeter, is everybody hearing her? Oh yes. Okay, good. Okay, good. Then the cramping will ease, you know. And so when I feel that kind of muscular cramping. It's telling me, this is my body, so I don't know if that works for you, Scott, but it's telling me that I'm just a teeny bit off kilter, that I'm not balancing on that post into the ground, that I am somehow shifting sideways or too far forward or back. You know, so then I look for the sweet spot where I'm balanced on, you know, really... Uh, really on top of my leg, you know, the, the, well, you know, when your leg feels like a post into the ground where I'm really on top of it and I'm not pulling off to either to the side or forward and back. So for me, that works, but you might so want to The structure it. gets more efficient. So it requires less, less muscular tension in order to sustain it. So that's, that's part of it too. I, I would actually like to introduce this, uh, this, Qua exercise because um, it's relevant to what we're talking about, even though we uh, we're running short on time. But it's something we can pick up again next time. The uh, but it'll give you something to work with over over the uh, over the week. So what you stand up, um, hold you, what? Move off the gallery. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, so. Bring your right leg forward, okay? Feel the weight over the balls of the feet. And you wanna set your knee over the ball of the foot like that, right? And good idea to pick up your left heel. Let me turn sideways here so you can see what's going on here. So this is kind of keep, in keeping what we've been talking about a lot lately, but this is uh, taking it one step further. And that is, okay, so now we're going to, we're going to release the quad by turning to the right. So we're on the right foot, we're going to turn to the right. So without shifting the weight off of the off of the 
ball of the foot, we relax down into the right quad and very slowly release the quad. So there should be no pull on the knee at all. So the releasing is happening here in the hip joint. The, the knee stays set, everything, and you just, and then you just hang out here in that release position, you're releasing down. So you're gonna notice a different kind of muscle is being involved in supporting you in this. It's more of a yin kind of a thing. You're not pushing away from the earth, you're sinking down into it. And then we're gonna turn very slowly, turn back to center. Good. And then going the other way, right foot, still set the knee and we're going to release spiral down to the left. The knee doesn't move, so you're releasing down. Notice my body is, I've turned 90 degrees by, just by releasing into the quad, okay? And you're going to release down and feel into that. Feel the, the support of the connective tissue system and the structure, the intrinsic structure of your body. And you'll also feel it's doing some work. It's doing something that maybe you are not used to. And then very slowly turn back to center. Good. And let's go to the left leg. Same idea here, I'll do it face on now. Good, so pick up the right heel. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee. This time, put your, your left hand, either hand on, on the leg, but left hand, I guess, probably. And you very slowly settle down. So you want the leg not to move. You're turning, releasing the quad, sitting down into that the leg, and you're hanging out there. Feel your center of equilibrium, reach with your knee wound, feel your elbows. Open the jade pillow gate. And just by doing this, you're going to start to discover how much work you got to do in order to be able to really be confident supporting yourself with that one leg. And then go back to center, turn without moving the knee, without shifting off the ball of the foot. And then spiral down to the right. Same idea, you're opening up the quad. You're feeling that and sinking down. So you're getting the additional strength in that. And this is something that you can do, you know, for a minute, two minutes, you know, multiple times a day. Just get it so that you can, can, can start to develop some tone there and tolerance for, the, for the, the work that's being done. And then turn back to center. Good, okay. All right, so that, uh, it's a workout. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> Okay, that was just a couple of minutes, but you can feel that, oh, there, there, there's, <laughs> that you're doing a lot with that. Yeah, Beatrice. I'm, I just want to say, like, I'm out of breath. It was, that's like, it was, that, was a, that was intense. I mean, my, my calf was cramping, but I, at the very end, I was out of breath, which is just like, I wasn't moving. It, that was amazing. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and, 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 you know, if things start to cramp up, start to say, okay, that's muscles that are, trying to fight each other. So I'm using muscles incorrectly mm. if that's happening. So what can I what can I release and make that make it make it more better? Cool. Uh, anybody else? Any, oh, Sandy. I noticed my left leg was a lot easier than my right leg. I don't know why. Like I had more cramping in my right leg. Left leg I could feel the connection 
into the quad and they were, I could feel it better with the left one. I don't know why it was just different. Uh, that, that's interesting. I think I find a lot of people that's true. They have a favorite leg and, you know, studies have shown that uh, you walk upstairs, you probably initiate with the same leg every time. So it's, you, you create an imbalance in your body. You know, whenever you, you know, walk somewhere, you, you initiate with the same leg. So it, uh, it, you do that, you know, tens of thousands of times and, and you create an imbalance in your, in your structure. But uh, I think I find a lot of people will find that there's a difference between the two. I know I do. I can, uh, I can feel, it, it varies from day to day too. You know, some, some days uh, one leg is better than the other. Yeah, Scott. <laughs> oh, Valerie. Valerie. And, and I should know better, of course, but I found when I was really concentrating on trying to um, really soften the hip, you know, the quad, that I, I ended up holding my breath, which made everything else tight. <laughs> so as soon as I caught that, it really made a difference for me. Good, good. And I think if you do the exercise and include, you know, all the pillars, you really get everything, you know, you start to, you make that shift and you'll notice things like, oh, I forgot to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a challenge, but it's something that you control how much, you know, you want to do at a given time. And, uh, you know, kind of, increase the uh, the challenge factor as you go along and you know you get better and it's i think it's a way of you know going <sighs> forward and making you know yourself even healthier a year from now than you are this year and healthier than five years uh, from now than even then so it keeps getting better you know, keep saying oh okay what can i do to make it better what can I do to make me better? And uh, so, you know, the I, what's the cash value in experiential terms? You know, and uh, <laughs> I like that expression. So uh, uh, this is this is cash value. You strong legs, better balance, more energy, more energetic connection, more root, mm. calmer, more centered, mm. way chi. Come on, where's the downside here? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, uh, it, it sounds like a winner across the boards. Okay, great. Um, excellent. Thank you. Oh, Beatrice, one more thing. Why was that work? At the end, you were like, that was a workout. And, you know, as I said, I was, why was that such a workout? Like, what? we were just standing. You don't do it. You don't What's do that? it ever. It's, it's new, right? <laughs> So even just two minutes of that is like, oh my God, you know, it's, it's, it's a workout. It's surprising. It, it is because it, it also, it's, it's not just like doing jumping jacks or, uh, you know, even squats, you know, where you're using the same muscles you've been using forever, right. which are the push away muscles, right? The, you know, say you do a, you do a squat, you know, you're, you're pushing away from the earth and it's the same same thing you've been doing your whole life. This says, no, no, we're not doing that. We're letting those muscles go and we're gonna go with these others that we never use. And, uh, and as they say like, ah, ah, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. But uh, they, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you get them ready. You get them ready and uh, then everything gets better when you start doing that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. Great. Okay, love you all. I'll see you next week. Bye bye. Rick. Bye, Rick. Thanks for you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Bye, thank you, thank Rick. You, Maria. Thank bye, you, Rick and Maria. Thank, thank you, Maria. 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 Thank you,